everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today I wanted to do something slightly different for one of my end of year wrap ups and that is to talk about my publishing achievements, self-publishing, indie publishing and any creative projects that I've done this year just to wrap up what I have done, have it all in, nice, in a nice condensed little place just for me to look back on and just feel proud of what I have achieved in 2023. I'm going to start off with projects that I've worked on and more of my smaller projects and then I'm going to go into my big project at the end because then I've got a lot more to talk about in terms of statistics, sales, book awards, quotes, all those fun things. So let's begin. The first project I want to talk about is March and Feather by Emma Saska. This is the debut contemporary YA novel of one of my closest friends and I have the honour of working on the cover and the interior design for this book and overall just handling the publishing. The bookmark fell out. So I've done a full video about the design, the cover making and the interior process on this channel. I will link it in the description below. That came out probably at the start of the year. But this came out on or around Valentine's Day 2023, so February. So this is where my year begun in terms of creativity. And this project is still my baby. There's another bookmark at the side. I'll show you the bookmarks. They have like a little clip of the cover on there and on the back. I don't know how well it was shown on this camera, but it's got text from the first conversations that the characters had. So this was the first time that I had the opportunity to work on a cover that was not my own and also do interior design at all. I say at all, I've done all my previous design experience was in Microsoft Word. This is where I really dipped into Procreate and Adobe InDesign. So this project is my baby just because it's one that I had full reins to do on my own and truly just have full creative control and also still working with a client in a sense. So there were limits, I did have a mood board inspiration to work from, but overall I got to make all the decisions. And this one I love because this was printed through Ingram Spark, so you have the opportunity to do what they call duplex printings, where you can print inside the cover. So on the back, let's go back up to the back. So the back I can have the full cover or for image. And then on the front I can still have the little conversation between the characters with a little sign book put in there. This was just really fun and I love Ingram Spark because I only published through KDP before this and it was just something to, oh I can do so much more. So this was again a learning experience for when I go into my big project, which I will show you in more detail, of just realising that the full extent of what self-publishing can be. And similarly I have this edition of March and Feather, which um, two copies exist, one for me and one for Emma. And this was just experimenting because I pulled up an original like a thumbnail design for what the cover could have been and it had a blue background instead of a pink and orange one and it's also why I realised you can barely see it on camera but it's why I realised the power of a drop shadow I think my only regret for this project is that I did pretty much all the cover work on my old iPad where I had such little storage I could only have I think eight layers in Procreate so I ended up merging a bunch together which I would not do now I'm a big fan of infinite layers so I can't go back and change specific colours in this unless I redraw it because the silhouettes, the like swirly headphone wire and the little flower here and I think something else will all merge into one layer because I just didn't have the storage for more. Which is a bit of a disappointment, but that's life. My second project for the year I can't show off because it is an audiobook but I have a little paper edition here of Paper Ghosts. This is a short story that is set directly after the events of my second novel Paper Forest. This paperback edition, I believe, came out in November 2022, so we're not talking about this, but it's got some very like fun, cool interior design as well. But I made an audiobook for this that came out in April. It's only 15 minutes long, as this book is, it's 30 pages, and I think 3,000 words. But that was really for me to dip into and kind of experiment with, hypothetically, if I did a full audiobook, which I am doing now, how would I do it? And that really taught me the basics of what you need to create an audiobook, which was just come down to a decent microphone. But then the distribution options for indie authors, I went with Find Way Voices, as I think I dabbled in Audible or ACX before, but then you were very limited to just Audible and I wanted more options from that. So I published that audiobook in April, maybe April 1st, April 20th this year. And pretty much every other week I get a sale from a library, which is so fun because first of all, who's reading this at a library? And also I have, I have got it listed saying that it is book 1.5 in the series. It comes directly after Paper Forest to the point where I've included it in, in the book now. As 
like who's getting this from the library like do they know it's like not a stand it probably can be read as a standalone but you're missing a lot of context and world building and like do you know and it's the fact that it's like every other week i get i get a like a sale or a like a little transaction coming up from a library usually overdrive or like hoopla i don't know i just have so many questions <laughs> No, this one was a very fun learning process of how to do an audiobook because that is something that I'm definitely doing now. I'm working on a separate video about audiobook process and hopefully that will be out in maybe February? Tentatively. And next up, for the remainder and the bulk of this video, we have My Baby Paper Forests. This book originally came out in June 2022, but I think I kind of rushed putting it together because I've been working on this book for so many years at that point, I just needed it done and out of my mind. So I published it. I think I talked about it more because again I have a video on the process of making this book which I'll again link in the description. I had to put it out, I had to get it out of my head and the second that I like, hit publish I realised that oh there's so many things I could do now because I felt like I finally had the clarity to think about this from a distance rather than just being so consumed in actually writing it. I could think about making the book. So this one exists, I've been marketing it as a special edition because it has got, it's got different cover art, I love the illustrations of this cover. It's got a few additional scenes and it's got the Paper Ghost short story included at the end. And it's got like a new, it's got interior design that mimics the original in terms of, where is it gone? In terms of the black pages and this glossy outline, but we've got new updated fonts, we've got a new interior, we've got, I'm very proud of this. I will show you more of the additions in full detail, but I'm going to talk about some achievements for this book in a sense. So this came out, I believe, August 17th, 2023. So at time of recording, it's like December 20th now. So it's been out for four months. And this book, I would say changed my life. It's changed my life in a very small scale way. As someone who publishes books and never promotes them, something's going on with this one. This is also the first book where I started submitting it into indie book competitions. Cause I thought, you know, I'm proud of this. It's a fantasy and as so many indie book competitions seem to favor fantasy, I thought, you know, I might have a chance here. So I submitted. I think I submitted to around 10 competitions in total. I have, I'm going to have to pull up my stats for you. Okay, maybe more like 10 or 12 competitions. There's a few I've got the results of already. There's three or four that I did not place in, but one of them I did from the Book Five Prize, I did get a quote from, which is, where's my book gone? <laughs> which is on the cover of my book and the book five prize is a publisher's weekly like supported company so it was very important to be like oh my god publishers weekly in a sense like my book so the quote is aided by tinges of classic fantasies paper forest makes for a creative mysterious and engaging narrative and i think i've got a few quotes from reviews and other competitions so i'm really just collecting adjectives that describe me and all of them make my heart just like skip a beat in the most affectionate way possible so out of maybe 12 competitions, three or four, which is like Book Life, Rubery, and like the Independent Authors Alliance competition, I did not place the um, Indie Ink Awards, which is part of the Indie Story Week competition, I was shortlisted for. I'm currently a Book Bloggers Novel of the Year Award, a BBMYA finalist. And at time of recording, I'm in the top 15 out of 252, so a finalist. At the time of recording, it's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday, which is when they release the order of the top 15 in the prizes. So I will insert a clip here showing you how I did. I came 12 out of 252. But I'm not overly worried about where I came, because coming in the top 15 out of 252 is an incredible achievement. Especially for my baby. And then even through a semi-finalist, the top 75 was incredible. And the fact that it is actually all reader and um, reviewer read as well. It's like, oh my god, multiple people like my book. So BBMIA finalist, I was a Wishing Shelf Best Cover finalist. They don't release their um, like final finalists for the actual books until next year. And then I was a finalist in the Book Fest Autumn. 2023 category I think they do like a twice a year competition so I was a finalist in the autumn well the fall one their American company so I was a second place in YA fantasy so that's my competitions I'm well obviously I'm doing well in the ones that I placed in but I'm doing a I went into it with like low expectations I thought you know I'd have to be involved 
I'm going to prioritise applying to competitions where you get, get like a guaranteed quote review out of it so I at least get something out of it. And now I'm actually becoming a finalist. So my expectations have just been blown. I don't know what to go from here. Let's talk about statistics for a second. I'm not going to go into exact details of like sales, sale numbers and profits because I think that's my business. <laughs> but I'll give you some other statistics. So on Goodreads, I currently have 18 ratings and 17 reviews. There are 78 people who have added this to their TBR, their to read list, which I think almost entirely came from this becoming a BBMA finalist because my stats just skyrocketed overnight. And also um, the book blogger Paper Fury purchased a copy of this book and put it on her on her grid. I will put that here. Because again, mind blown that I'm now like casual friends with Paper Fury because we've been emailing. In contrast, my first novel, Beauty and the Breakdown, has about 400 people who have added it to their TBR on Goodreads. But that is because I did run a giveaway for it in 2017. Back when, first of all, Goodreads giveaways were acceptable internationally and you could just list it without having to pay the hundreds of pounds cost. I submitted it when it was free and international, so I have 400 ads on that one. So this one having 78 like, authentic ads, I think means a lot more to me than giveaway statistics. Anyway, speaking of giveaway statistics, I submitted this book for a Storygraph giveaway because they had their giveaway program is like in beta right now, so it's vaguely cheap. It was like un under 50 pounds. I should not be saying numbers, but so this is like publicly accessible information. You can buy like a credit for around 50 pounds for like the standard version of their giveaways, and I got one of those, and. My giveaway statistics. Ooh. I had 69,000 impressions. I had 8.7 thousand page views. Total entries were 5.5 thousand and unique entries were 4 thousand. And at the time of posting the giveaway, my book had zero reviews on Goodreads. Um, they don't have, to my knowledge, they don't have like an author page, so I couldn't see how many like people on my to read list or anything like that, not like Goodreads has. But I ended it on 487 people adding it to their TBR, which they say is a 6,000% to read growth. Very fascinating. And I think what I will tell you about money statistics is that I have technically earned out in a self-publishing way. So the costs I actually put into this book were the for the cover art and the ISBNs. I originally bulk bought ISBNs. I got 10 because the price for one is very similar to the price for ten, so I bought ten and then I <laughs> sell on them at a very discounted price to friends. Because why would you pay over a hundred pounds for one ISBN when you can pay a hundred pounds for ten? And I think I will end this video talking about the editions that we have right now for Paper for Us. So firstly, we have the ebook edition, which I will just put a cover of here. All the covers are slightly different. The ebook one has no quote on the front, but it does specify that it is book one of the Paper Forest series, because I am intending for it to be a trilogy. I'm outlining the second one right now and I'm so in love with this book still. First one, that one there, ebook. I think it is $2.99 in pretty much every currency. It's available in a whole lot of places, you can request it from your library, all those fun things. Next one is my baby, the paperback. First of all, it, I'm sorry it has blinding white in the publishing pages, it's because Cream Pages made like the black the black look very muddy and I care about visuals more than reading experience apparently. But this paperback is my baby. This one has the long quote on the front from the Book Life Prize. This one has my lovely type duplex printing on the front and my author bio on the back. This one retails for £10.99p in most places. It's currently on sale on Amazon for about £8 which is like a regular book price. But unfortunately indie publishing makes books very expensive because the distributors take such a huge percentage of it. And this is a kind of thick book. It's only like 380 pages, but I think anything over 300 starts to get expensive. And also the duplex printing makes it expensive. So I always like to offer an ebook version for affordability. And then here you get my baby, my special edition. And I think this has taught me that maybe for future releases, maybe I'll try and make not have the fun details, but we'll see, we'll dwell on that. Then we have the hardcover. What I have it listed right now is a short quote on the left by reader, reader's favourite. 
which says a hugely imaginative work. I don't have the edition with that quote on right now, but I'll put the cover right here so you can see what we're looking at. But because I ordered mine from Amazon, because this one is on sale for £13.76 right now, it usually retails for £16.99, which I believe is very affordable for a hardcover. But I bought it on sale. It says there's still seven left in stock for this old cover, and then hopefully it will update to the new cover. But this one here has the cyanotype, the cyanotype, the cyanotype case laminates. So you can take it on just to like have this nice to have and to hold. It's got the same interior as the paperback, you know, the black pages. Other than that, the only real difference is it's a hardcover in here. Beautiful. I'm very looking forward to when I release the sequel in hardcover and this entire back cover can just be all the quotes I've hoarded from this publishing year. And then finally, we have the newest addition to my bookshelf, which is the Paper Forest large print edition. This was an experiment because for my upcoming book, it features a blind character. So I wanted to experiment with making reading options as accessible as possible. So we went for large print because it's there's something people sell, it's something people buy. And anything I can offer to make your reading experience as easy as possible, I would like to do. So this one here, this is this one is exclusive to Amazon right now because I published this with KDP as experimenting. So it has the what quote does that say? The hugely imaginative work, the reader's favourite quote. The same as the other hardcover but it's bigger than the centre because for it to be a large print edition it's got to be size 16 font minimum. So you've got some big writing there, this big one in the back and looking at this I think this may be what it takes for my mum to read my books. And the interior is all exactly the same as the other one. It is just, let's find a good example, it's literally just bigger. It's easier to read. Unfortunately, it is still on blinding white pages because I have updated this from the original 2022 version of Paper Forest. So it's locked all the, the page colour options. So when I do this for my next book, it will be on clean paper to hopefully reduce a lot of eye strain from that and again make this as accessible as possible to read. This one retails again for $16.99, same as the other hardcover. But this one, as the font size increased the page count, is a bit over 400 pages. It's there, lovely, fun. Yeah, the final other part of the Paper Forest publishing experience was the pre-order campaign where I released some bookmarks and art prints and a signed book plate, which I think I mentioned again in a different video. So it's just a little extra incentive for supporting my lovely, my lovely Forestie fam. And as Twitter, author Twitter is currently having a scandal about copywriting the sun, I would like to copyright forests. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it offered a bit of insight into the indie publishing experience. And it's just nice for me to have a roundup in one place of the little things I've worked on this year, just so I can feel infinitely proud of everything I've done. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.